Hi, and welcome to my guide. Today, we're going to be completing the quest Perilous Moons. The quest requirement is Twilight's Promise, and the stat requirements are 10 construction, 20 runecrafting, fishing and hunter, and 48 slayer. There are no needed items. And for the recommended items for the first part of this quest, just bring your best weight reducing clothing with maybe one or two stamina potions and have at least six empty inventory slots. What also might be helpful is one dose of anti-poison. For the second part of this quest, where we'll need to defeat all three the Perilous Moon bosses, therefore we will need to have banked a crush, slash and stab weapon, some tank melee armor and good food and potions. Where to start Perilous Moons is right here on the western side of Valamore. You could simply run west from the city of Fortis and run straight there following the dirt path. Or since we have completed the quest and we have access to the Quetzals, you can take the Quetzal to Theomat and from there run south taking the level 47 agility shortcut. Once we have arrived, let's talk to Atala on the bridge and select option 1 to start the quest. A guard will come out of the Dwarven city and will say that a monster has escaped and we will have to deal with it. Select option 1 to start the quest. Next, let's run southeast, crossing the bridge. If you've used the Quetzal, it is the same way back the way we came from. If you do not have level 47 agility, then you will need to run west and follow that path all the way around. If you do have level 47 agility, then climb the rocks, and up the rocks you should find a Comet 98. This is a really easy monster, just simply defeat it by flicking some melee if you want to. It is really weak against all melee styles. Once we defeated the sulfur specter looking thing, let's return to Atla. And we had a deal with Atla if we dealt with the escaped monster. We now have access into the Dwarven city. After speaking to Atla, cross the bridge and enter the city. Once we've entered the city, we simply need to go north. Keep going north, ignore all the racist dwarfs, and just keep going north until you find Atala once again. Alright, let's pass through the entrance and run north until you can't go any further, and there you will find three NPCs. Atala, Jessamy, and the priest Zuma. Let's talk to Jessamy and select option 1. All right, north of the hanging brazier looking thing, next to the bank, there we'll find a dungeon sign, as well as Atala and Jessamine. Let's talk to Jessamine and select option 1. After we've selected option 1, we now have access to the entrance, just a bit of north. Enter. And there you should find the three NPCs once again. Let's go to the western one and speak with Atala. After speaking to Atala, she will move to the west. She will move to the eastern mural. Wait until Atala has arrived to Zuma and talk to any of the two NPCs. After the two NPCs are moving to the northern mural, wait for both to have arrived and talk to any of the three NPCs. Next, we will need to make some camp. Next to you, there will find stacked crates. Take from, and then enter the northwestern earthbound cavern. Go through the entrance and follow the dungeon. It looks really nice. It looks also a place where you can get lost, but just follow the dungeon until you see a cooking range sign. Go towards it, and there you will need to build a camp spot. 
and there you will need to build a camp. Do so, and you will see that your run has been rejuvenated. Afterwards, let's continue going east, and let's go to the Streaming Cavern. You could go all the way back and go through the main room, but since all these caverns are connected, let's go through the Southern Cave. Then continue going south, up a level, and they will find the second camp site, which is indicated with a cooking range sign. Next, continue going south, and go southeast, and go through the southeastern engine door entrance. In the loot room, continue going south, pass the lunar chest, and keep going south. Once in the final cavern, or prison, go north, and maybe flick protect from melee while running north. Keep running north until you see the final campsite that we will need to build. Once we have built that campsite, go back south, back to the entrance where we just came from, but follow this time the dungeon east. East, there will be a second room with level 98 sulfur specters, and keep going northeast and, and, and go through that entrance to make your way back to the central room. There, let's talk to Atla and select option 1 twice. Afterwards, we will need to exit this dungeon back into the Dwarven City. In the Dwarven City, we will need to go to the Magic Shop and the Blacksmith. First, the Magic Shop, and that is located back at that hanging metal brazier. And across the street from the bank, there is, on the western side, a Magic Shop. Enter it and talk to to Nata. Select option 3 to make the two talismans enchanted. After these are enchanted, go through the door and let's go north of the bank, northeast and go to the blacksmith. There's no door, just simply talk to the blacksmith and select option 2 and then 1. And this should trigger a cutscene. After this cutscene is over, we will need to return to Atala. And after we've returned to Atala, we will need to use both these infused talismans to locate the Guardian of these prisons. And the location of the Guardian is random for everyone. But this is pretty easy. It is pretty similar to the Fremic Trials quest while we were hunting for the Draugen. So, click on both the talismans and then follow the directions that they pull you in. Be sure that you know the difference between East and West. Go through any of the caverns and keep locating using the talismans until you found the Guardian. Ah, there we go. I walked straight past this one. Keep pressing space, and it will say that it is the guardian of the prison. Now, Zuma has done something wrong, and the prisons start to shake. 
Let's make our way back to the center room to talk to the NPCs. Let's talk to Atala, and the Guardian will say that we'll need to fetch three items for it to be able to fix the damage that Zuma has done. Next, let's go northwest, back into the Earthbound Cavern, and let's go back to the first campsite that we have created. Let's go there. And right click and grab a kappa to restore our run energy. After we have 100% run energy back, just two tiles north, they'll find some stacked crates. Let's first grab our run energy and then right click on the supply crates, grab some fishing supplies, then grab the hunting supplies and drop the net as well as take herbal supplies and drop the two vials. Next, go east. East, next to the water, they'll find two grubby saplings. Let's collect one and then grind it up. It is item number one. If you're short on space, you can drop the pestle and water. Next, let's click on every rock in the center of this room to set up three traps. Then north and south of the traps, you'll find some bushes that you can rustle. Do so, and then three lizards will come out. To start trapping some lizards. Let's pick up one, and then cut off its tail using a knife. Next, let's go back south. And let's use the southern entrance to go to the streaming cavern again. From there, let's go southwest this time and go to the bridge. There you'll find a fishing sign. Fish and grab one fish. Now if only you're able to stop fishing, that would be great. I don't want to fill my inventory completely, so I'm just going to quickly hop worlds maybe. I don't know why you're continuing to fish, to be honest. To be honest, I don't know why this happens, but this also with my other account, you continued to fish until your inventory was completely full. All right, you only need one fish, use your knife on it to grab some scales and then return to the Guardian. Continue going west, back to the central room. Talk to the Guardian spirit and keep pressing space. And then there's only one more task to do, and that is to distract the three bosses while the Guardian is fixing the prison. So that is part one completed. Let's head south to prepare for the three separate boss fights. The three bosses are pretty similar. They all have circles surrounding them, of which one is highlighted. Protection prayers also do not work. The only way to avoid getting heavy damage is by standing on the highlighted tile. The highlighted tile is the protection given by the Guardian. Okay, so in the end I'm going with this armor. I'm gonna be preferring defense armor over strength bonus. With my relatively low stats I think that should be the best option. As well, the three bosses all have a different weakness. The Eclipse is weak to Stab, the Blood is weak to Slash, and the blue one is weak to Crush. I'm also going to be bringing those three weapons. And that is going to be my inventory and one emergency teleport if one of the bosses manages to deplete all my supplies. I'm not going to be bringing along food and potions, I'm going to be gathering that in the dungeon. Once you think you are ready, let's head north and go back to the three characters, as well as the Guardian. And I think I'm going to be starting with the Eclipse 
Merle. So let's go to the northeastern streaming cavern. And from there, let's go north. Keep running north and let's go to the cooking range sign. There. Let's grab another 100% run energy from the campsite. Afterwards, let's right click on the stacked crates and take fishing and herb lore supplies. Once we have these, let's head north and back into the earthbound cavern. There, there are some grubby saplings that we can still grab some herb lore supplies from. Oh, don't get poisoned. Just a bit northwest, they'll find some grubby saplings. Let's grab two of them and then grind them using our pesto and mortar. And these paste you can use in a vial of water to make moonlight potions. These potions are basically a super combat potion and prayer potion combined. I think having two potions would be enough to last for the three fights. Let's go back into the streaming cavern. Maybe use Protect from Melee if you are combat 101 or below. Do not get poisoned. Let's return to the campsite. Get some more run energy. No, I'm gonna immediately start fishing. And let's get now a full inventory of Bream. This time we're not gonna be cutting up the fish, so we may drop the knife and continue fishing. Hoi, editing me here. This quest has been released about 24 hours ago and there's barely any info about the breams. These breams at 71 hit points and cooking, they heal me 23 HP each. While on an account with 85 HP and 99 cooking, they heal me for 28. So the amount they heal depends on something that is currently unknown. But still, a 23 healing food for level 71 HP that is still very awesome. Does not depend on your HP level, right? Now it still heals 28. And this one... This all of a sudden heals... What? 32? Nah, 33. They heal you one third of your cooking level. 99 divided by 3 is 33. Idiot. Once your inventory is full, let's go to the cooking range, cooking stove, and let's cook all of these fish. Right, once we are done cooking, it's time for the boss fight. Let's head southwest, crossing the bridge first, southwest, and that is the boss room. Once you think you are ready, let's use the statue. It will have a scary message saying if you drop your weapon and you defeat the boss, that means that you have lost your weapon. That's basically what this says. Select the first option that you understand. And after a shortcut scene of Zuma getting taken care of, the boss fight will start. So first and foremost, always stand on the highlighted circle. And without any specials, you should be able to hit the boss twice before having to move to the next circle. So, for the first boss, just like the two other bosses, it will be surrounded by circles. One of the circles is going to be highlighted. Don't try to use Protect from Melee because that does not work. To be protected, you will need to stand on the highlighted tile. The Eclipse boss is weak to stab, and it also has two special attacks. The first one is double team, and you will need to click on the newest spawned one as fast as possible. Do not wait for your character to hit the previously spawned one when there's already a new one spawned. Just always focus on the newly spawned one. The second special attack is sphere mode. This is the same as the wall from Zuck. Stand behind it and run along its path but stay also very close to avoid getting any damage taken.
Once you've defeated your first boss, you'll be taken to the next cavern. If you still have plenty of food remaining, then ignore the next step. For everyone else, let's grab some hunting supplies, drop the butterfly net, and then start trapping the rocks and grab a full inventory of raw moss lizards. Once we have a full inventory, let's cook them on the campsite so we have a full inventory of food with at least one Moonlight Potion. Once you think you are ready to defeat the next boss, let's head east, straight east, to the next boss room. Once you think you are ready, let's head into the Ice One. Oh, we are already within the special attack. Let's light that brazier. This one is weak to crush. The blue moon also once again has some circles surrounding it. Always stand on the highlighted tile to be protected. The blue moon also has two special attacks. The first one is that you will have to light braziers on both sides of the prison while avoiding the watery tornadoes. If you get hit by the tornadoes, they will stop you from running and deal you about 7 or 8 damage. The second special attack is that you will need to kill the highlighted iceberg while avoiding the icicles. Hit the iceberg once or twice and then definitely step away to avoid getting hit by the icicles. Is that it already? Nice. Once you've defeated the blue one, it is time for the red one. This one, the Blood Moon, is weak against Slash. But I also think that one of the two specials of the Blood Moon is rather difficult. So if you have used quite a lot of food, then be sure to take some hunting supplies and maybe herblore supplies and then go through the Northwestern Tor and grab some more supplies. If you think you have plenty of supplies remaining, be sure that you have 100% run energy, and then let's head east. Protect from melee, passing the sulfur creatures. 
and then go through the northeastern entrance. The Blood Moon, once again, is surrounded by circles, and one of which is highlighted. Stand on it to have protection. Protection prayers also do not work. Stand on the highlighted tile to have your protection. The Blood Moon also has two special attacks. The first one is a really easy one. Just don't stand on any blood pools. Stand still, do nothing, maybe turn off Pidey, and wait until the tile that you're standing on is going to have a blood pool on it. Then simply move away a tile to a tile that does not have a blood pool and just wait once again. The second special attack makes you attack a highlighted Jaguar. This one is a little bit like a rhythm game. You will need to attack the Jaguar to get healed 3 hit points or so. But before the Jaguar attacks, you will need to move away. But don't move away too quickly, else you will make a blood pool explode and you will take like 5 damage. So you must really anticipate when the Jaguar is going to attack and then just move away one tile on that exact tick and then move back. Attack the Jaguar, anticipate when the Jaguar is going to attack, then move back and then immediately attack the Jaguar again. This feels kind of like a rhythm game and this might be really annoying for your very first few attempts. And to be honest, if you're always off the rhythm, then the Blood Jaguar can really deplete your supplies really quickly. And that's about it. Once we've defeated this boss, we have the quest completed. boy first attempt yes boy first attempt yes boy fuck the jaguars fuck that rhythm game yes once you have defeated your third boss i think the jaguars are the most difficult part of this boss let's go south passing the sulfur creatures and let's follow the dungeon going southeast then northeast back to the central room. Let's head to Zuma first. North at the Northern Mural. Let's talk to Zuma about the idiot he is. Then let's talk to the Guardian to complete our quest. And congratulations, you've completed Perilous Moons. You are awarded with two quest points, access to Naipotsli, the Perilous Moons dungeon, 40,000 Slayer experience, and 5,000 in Runecraft, Hunter, and Fishing. Oh no. Level 72, that will not do. Oh no. I'll need to fix this. Okay, thanks, bye.